Hi, my name is Hannah Watson. Hi, my name is Anna Schrag. I'm a senior at Andover High School. When I see, look in the mirror, I see a number of things. I see passion, I see strength, and I see an ebony visage that the, other, that the rest of the world may not look upon with pleasure, but nonetheless, when I look at myself, I see beauty. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Um, an individual with a lot of talent. What do I like least about myself? I think that I have this passion about whatever I do that's so strong that I allow myself to fall from to fall from building it up and building people up to tearing people down for whatever that passion may be. I get angry sometimes and I don't lash out physically and I u and I don't use try I don't use hurtful words on purpose, but sometimes I try to lord my intellect over people, which I I really wish I didn't do and that's something that I'm working on. My hard-headedness. How would you feel if someone pointed out this insecurity to you or to others? Honestly, if someone pointed this out, I'd probably do exactly the thing that that it is and I would I would prove them right. I would subsequently I would feel ashamed of myself as I usually do. I've had my insecurities pointed out to others and to myself multiple times and I wouldn't say that being hard-headed really stops being insecure because it's wrong, it doesn't. Um, it's really not a good feeling and it makes you feel little and degraded and not worth very much. What do you like most about yourself? I, one thing that I learned at this, um, at this leadership conference I went to this summer, Hobie, is that within every person, um, you're, every person is a yin yang. You have good within the bad and bad within the good. And I think that what I like most about myself is my passion and that's what causes the bad that is within the good. I like that whatever I do, I'm going to do it well. I don't do anything without uh, striving for excellence. And sometimes, yes, that does turn out to be a weakness, but when it's done right, when I'm, pa when I'm passionate with moderation, oxymoronic though, ma th though that may be, that's when the greatest things come out of me. What do you like most about yourself? Uh, my passion to work and to be successful. To figure out what they like most about themselves in about 30 seconds, figure out what they like least about themselves. I did not know that, but it does not surprise me at all. I think that we live in a society where confidence is frowned upon. Uh, you might have noticed in my other answers that when I said I look in the mirror and I see beauty, I immediately took that back. I didn't want people to think that I was being conceited or that I was be, uh, glorifying myself. But I think that what girls don't understand is that it's okay to think that you're beautiful. It's okay to think that you have good qualities that people might strive after as long as you're not um, overstating it. It's okay to have confidence in yourself and most girls don't have that. Most girls see themselves and they're like, oh, this person doesn't like me. I'm not as pretty. I'm not as tall. I'm not as skinny. This boy will never like me. This, the world will never like me. And they're scared to say, wow, there's something good inside me. God put something special inside of me. It, it's sad that our society shames that, that our society shames looking at yourself and seeing beauty. Does social media affect how you view yourself? Does social media affect how I view myself? Um, I think I'd like to say that it doesn't but in some ways it does. Um, whether for the better or not, I don't think I'm affected so much by what my peers say like on Twitter and on Instagram. I don't get upset or anything when they say, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. But within uh, myself, I might look at a picture of say, 
I don't know, Lupita Nyong'o, most beautiful woman of 2014. Like, that's uh, people's most beautiful woman of 2014. And I say, wow, she's so skinny. Her cheekbones are so high. And I look at myself and I'm like, I wish that could be me. But I, th I think that the key to being successful and using social media without degrading your your confidence is no is being secure with yourself and I'm I'm fairly secure with who I secure in who I am and how I look whether other people like it or not so that's why I'm able to handle it um, a few months back I went through a lot of hard times um, just with friends and personal issues in life and um, being like told that I was less or being made fun of on social media really like opened my eyes but like opened my eyes towards the negativity that people like put out and it taught me to be more vibrant and to show more expression in a good way and positive and always to look at like the good that I had in my life because um, I could have brought out like all the bad things that people said about me and all the things and just continue to increase that about me because the process of belittlement is someone learns to belittle because they've been belittled before so when someone belittled me I could have continued the process of belittlement and went and belittled someone else but I learned to not because I don't like being belittled so why would I want to make someone feel the way that I didn't like to be felt so Learning to stop the process of belittlement is definitely important in the whole scheme of things. If you could say one thing or just one, like, something to someone who treats other people wrongly because they're different, say, skin tone, sexual preference, or even uniqueness of speech. What would I say to them? Um, I think I would more so show them proof of how it hurts people and how it's degrading and how it makes people feel because I've been in that position of being the degrader and being degraded so I know like how easy it is to degrade someone but I also know how it feels to be degraded and it's not a good feeling and after you are degraded you feel even worse than you have before and it's just shows I would show that person that it's not okay to do that and that if they were to feel degraded they would probably feel worse about themselves than they already do if you treat others wrongly because of skin tone because of sexuality because of any other flaw then I pity you I pity that you are unable to see the magnificent beauty that is within every person no matter what I I am a dark-skinned person. I will never be what, I will never be part of the majority. I will never be who America seems to want everybody to be. I will always be pulled, I will always be, be singled out for, be, for, my color, for the color of my skin. I will most likely all have children that will be pulled over for driving while black or that will be discriminated against. And that worries me, that pities me. If you're one who does that, then I'm gonna to continue to pray for you. I'm gonna to continue to pray that God opens your eyes so that you can see the world the way that he sees it. So that you, that's what I often say to myself, that, I, that I, I ask God to let me see everybody the way that he sees it, sees them. If you, if you think that it matters, if you want to say that Oh, so if you're if you're still in the in the mindset of manifest destiny and God created uh, the white-skinned people to take over the world, if you're still in the mindset set of God made us, this, God made it so that He hates homosexuals. If you're taking if you're trying to take a Christian view on this and say that God doesn't like this person, you are absolutely wrong because God is love. You have to love everybody no matter what. It doesn't matter who they are doesn't matter what they say, what they do, especially it doesn't matter what they look like. So I hope that you can find in you the vision to see the world the way that it was meant to be seen.